What's up, yo? Welcome back to the channel, Better Call Saul, season six, episode number 10. And holy, holy, holy shit. <laughs> that episode and the way this show tells its story is incredible. We got a massive time jump, which I initially didn't love at first, but we'll talk about that, obviously, because my opinion shifted completely moments after watching it and going through the episode again and editing and stuff completely changed immediately. But Kim is gone. She finally was just like, I can't do this anymore. It's toxic. And, and some of the stuff that she said to Jimmy was just heart, like talking about how much fun she was having. Jimmy's like sitting there sobbing, like, no, no, no. I, I can we, change. We can't do oh, that. Yeah. And I love you. And then she's like, it doesn't matter. Like, holy shit. There's just so much powerful storytelling there. And just, we knew it was coming to this point. We knew something was happening. Something. Yeah. We knew Jimmy becomes Saul Goodman all the way. Jimmy McGill's now dead. There is no Jimmy McGill. That story is boom, done. Kim, I initially thought like, oh my God, her story's over. I don't think her story's over. I think we're going to get more with her at some point, whether it's Gene Timeline or it's episodes with Kim. Like, I mean, I think we only have like four episodes left. Aww. So there isn't a ton of time, which is horrifying to think about not having any more Better Call Saul or any more Breaking Bad. I will take a spinoff of Kim. Thank I mean, you so much. that would be absolutely fantastic. Right? She is one of the greatest characters created. Like, anything that we've ever seen, mm -hmm. she's one of the best. The story arc and just her Breaking Bad the way that she did and then having the realization, just like, holy shit, people died. And it's my fault and... Jimmy's fault and the plan that we came up with and the impact of however many people they had with everything that they did. And, you know, I, I wonder if it was the conversation. I think it had to have been the conversation with, with Howard's wife because oh, yeah. the lie and the story that she told there to confirm this drug addiction, that's when she gave Jimmy like the goodbye kiss in the garage. And then it was over from that point, basically. It was just too much. And, and you felt that building. Despite her having a lot of fun mm -hmm. and doing really good job with all of this, it's just, it was too much for her. Because she's a good person. Yeah. And it just became too much. And she had to put an end to it. And it doesn't matter what her relationship was with Jimmy. It doesn't matter how good they might have been together in the future. What they did was some really bad shit. Yeah, and giving up her law license. Yes. Yeah. She's, that was a pretty crazy scene too, because I don't think anybody, like, let us know, obviously, in the comments. I, I was not expecting her to be like, I gave up my law license. I just thought maybe she's like, I'm leaving. Yeah. But she's just like, I'm not a lawyer anymore. I can't represent this person anymore. It's like, wait, what? Bomb, boom. I wonder, and then it progressed into the time jump. I wonder, though, if she maybe would become a lawyer in another state. But then I think, I don't know. I mean, I don't know how that process would work. But I just don't know how much her heart's going to be in that profession anymore after every, like, it'd be too much of a reminder to everything that she'd probably been through and did and all that stuff. That's true. So I don't know if that would be an option for her. But I 100% I think we're going to get some kind of recap. And if we don't get a recap, I'll like initially my thoughts will be like, that's upsetting. Yeah. But I trust these storytellers and everything they do with their stories <laughs> are amazing and fantastic. And they've literally created one of the greatest universes in the history of storytelling, content, movies. Well, because there is a movie show like all of this. Breaking Bad and Better Call Saul is an amazing universe. And I just can't wait to see where it goes. And when they hit us with that time jump, I was initially like, what? I was like, the last three episodes have been so shocking. Mm -hmm. I was, I think I was just more in awe of what was happening yeah. with the story because we're actually getting to the places that we knew we were getting to. And just the fact that we got that time jump it initially disappointed me just because I was just in shock. Like, I was shocked. But it was a perfectly placed, amazing time jump. The fact that Kim walks away, Jimmy is gone, poof, here's Saul, 100% all the way. Mm -hmm. And this is the guy that we know from Breaking Bad, 
and now we know exactly how he got to that point. And I think if you go back, like we actually watched his debut in Breaking Bad, the Better Call Saul episode, just because I, I thought it'd be interesting now that we're kind of in that timeline. I think yeah. we're a couple years away from that moment, but it's just, it hits so much differently now because he's not just some asshole lawyer dude doing yeah. his thing. Yeah. He has like a full backstory of whole kinds of crazy shit. And it just, it, it everything hits differently. It all starts with Badger. Yeah. <laughs> It hits so different now watching just even that one episode. And I know if we watch more episodes, things are just going to hit harder and things are just going to hit differently. And it's just, I mean, how dare I even come close to ever questioning anything Vince Gilligan's doing or any of the creators or writers of this show, anyone who's involved with this. How dare I even come close to questioning what they're doing with their storytelling because it's flawless. Yeah. It is flawless. And this show is on its way to being, in my opinion, the best show ever created. Because, again, it gets a little extra bonus points for being a prequel. Because it Honestly. has to hit a lot of very specific notes. It can't create certain things. It has to flow on a certain story that fits into the Breaking Bad universe, which is a really challenging thing to do. But, whew, unbelievable. Like, the way their story got essentially wrapped up, Jimmy McGill being gone, Kim... Yeah how she made her decision. Completely wrong. She didn't die. She didn't get arrested. Nope. She didn't, at least to this point, she hasn't gotten erased, gone to the sea, see the vacuum dude. That's right. Um, I forgot about that part. She just walked away. Yes. She just walked away from it. And we she, were way off. And it probably the best decision. She walked away probably at the best time where if you kept going, things probably get worse and worse and worse and worse. And then there is like no way out. It's just one of those things where Kim, she's really smart, and I think she picked the perfect time to bounce. Yeah. And I can't, Agreed. I can't wait to, like, if we get more with her, I can't wait to see where she went, what she went to do. Because, again, this has been an amazing character. She is one of the reasons why I might, like, we still got a handful of episodes left. It has to stick the landing. It's got to be a boom, 10, hit the flip. Feet stick. And Kim's one of the reasons why I would put it ahead of Breaking Bad because she's such a flawless character. And then, of course, we got to talk about the Gus moment where that kind of flew over both of our heads in the moment. Because, Agreed. Totally ag agree. <laughs> again, it's one of those things where everything that we see with Gus, everything is so tense and so on edge and so concerned Terrifying. about what's going on around him. It kind of was just like... Oh my God, what's happening? Who's watching him? Like the far shots of him at the bar. And Something it was, bad's going to happen. But it was literally just a simple moment for Gus going to get a drink. Everything has basically been put behind him. The whole Don Eladio situation, the Salamaca stuff was put behind him. It, like it was his moment that he basically got his life back, basically. And he went to go have a drink. And he was having a really nice moment with a friend. And it was one of those things where you saw how much they were enjoying the interaction and the conversation. And I think Gus had that little moment where it was like, I can't get too comfortable. Yeah. I don't have a normal life. I can't interact with this person the way that I want to and hang out with him and have a relationship with him. That's not something that I can do. And it was kind of a sad moment. Like, again, it was one of those things. I get to watch the episodes more than Nikki. It was kind of sad to see that moment happen. I could see that, yeah. Because it felt like, like watching it again, it felt like something like popped up and he had to leave or noticed something and had to leave. It was just a realization that like, he doesn't have a normal life and he can't, he, there's too much high risk. His plans and everything that he's associated with, he can't live that normal life. And he had that realization and he had to leave. And then you see basically everyone is basically transitioned into the people that we are familiar with in Breaking Bad now. And I can't wait to see what these last handful of episodes are even going to look like. Right. Because where's the story go? It feels like all the loose ends are all tied up. All the characters that are in Breaking Bad that belong there are there. All the ones that don't belong there, we know what their fate is. Well, I mean, we still don't know what necessarily Kim's fate is. But we know why she's not with Jimmy and why, well, he's not Jimmy anymore. He is now Saul Goodman yeah. all the way. Yeah. We know why Saul is the way he is 
and just everything is in place now. Do we get a bunch of Gene episodes? Do we continue on like the Better Call Saul timeline that we saw at the end of last episode where we do creep into, like is there gonna be overlap in the Breaking Bad timeline? Where, cause I think, again, I saw some of your comments about the timeline. Someone like saw like a license plate, mm -hmm. like registration or something. And there, I think we're two years away from the moment that Walt and Jesse actually meet Saul. So we've got a little bit of time there that we could probably play with. And then we still got the Gene stuff, which I think is probably the more fascinating of all the storylines because who the hell knows where that goes? Like, is there going to be a moment where Jimmy, I keep, I'm going to keep calling him Jimmy because it's kind it of happens, been that way for a while you know, now. Is, is there going to be a, a lot? <laughs> is there a moment where Gene, because in that storyline, he's Gene, is going to find Kim? And it's funny because I saw some people talking about like, they don't deserve a happy ending. About the way that they, you know, everything went and all the stuff that they did. I mean, did. they did some real shit stuff, guys. Real shit. And I think, I think that would be a fascinating twist because maybe they don't deserve that happy ending, but the twist is that they do get that happy ending. Like you could still be giant assholes and be responsible for people's deaths, but at the end, you end up together, and boom, that's where we go happily ever after. Kim and Jimmy back together again. I, I think that would be a really interesting twist if that's where this goes and that's how it wraps up. But I just can't wait to see where it goes because again, these storytellers are absolutely amazing and I'm just excited to see how they wrap it up even though it's gonna be really sad when this show ends because yeah. again, it's been amazing. Yes. Any other thoughts? No. It's showtime, folks. Black and white, see, right into a jean. Can I give you a hand? If I needed a hand, I'd ask for it. Thank you very much. Sorry. Is that I mean, Carol she, Burnett? I mean, she got it. She got <laughs> it. We haven't gotten a Gene scene yet this season, right? Uh-uh. Because this season opened up with his house getting repoed. Right. Is it a pastrami day? Yeah, uh, one and a quarter pound. Not a pound and a half. You overshot last time. Sorry about that. What do we have here? Extra sharp Wisconsin cheddar. Ooh. You can keep it, Wisconsin. <laughs> he said it was extra sharp. <laughs> But it's delicious. I never met a cheese I didn't like. Oh no! It wasn't like this when I came before. Need some Nippy. help? I'm fine. The episode was named Nippy. Yes. Are you sure you don't want to push? Yeah. I'm sure. She doesn't want any help. What happened to poor Nippy? I was driving with the windows open, you know, before all this hit. And I don't know, something got into him. Maybe he saw a cat or something, but he jumped. What? I pulled right over, I'm screaming my head off. Nippy! But he was gone. I hope you find him. Maybe just a little push. Are you sure you don't mind? Yeah, I'm happy to help. No. Oh. She warmed up to him. This feels sus. <laughs> okay, neutral. And one, two, three. Why did he just? Sorry for the trouble. Can't drive. Not at all. Have a nice day. Yeah. What in the world? How you doing, Marion? Great. Oh, good. <laughs> what the hell? <laughs> what was that all about? <laughs> I don't know. That was bizarre. I love the tape. The video tape. Yeah. Oh. We're still in black and white? That felt like the scene we saw in season five when he got noticed. The air freshener, right? She's connected to him. Jeffy, this is Mr. Takovic. Call me Gene. Don't worry, hon. He's not an axe murderer. If he was going to chop me to bits, he'd have done it already. Right, Gene? <laughs> well, don't just stand there like a bump on a log. 
Sometimes he gets a little nervous around new people. Mom. Grab a glass and sit down. What is he up to? Yeah. Is this going to be a full Gene episode? It'd be awesome. Dude, what the fuck? I know it's awkward, right? But you don't have to call me dad yet. Oh, shit. All I have to do is pick up the phone and it's bye-bye Saul Goodman. Yeah, but you haven't picked up the phone yet, have you? Or tried to strong-arm me for cash. And guess what? I know why. Because reward money, blackmail, that's not going to tickle your pickle. I know what you really want. What now? What's that? You want to end the game. What, what game? The one you've been watching your entire life. You got your nose pressed up against the glass, peering in while the big boys play. He's <laughs> right there. You can see it, but you can't touch it. It's about knowing all the angles, you know, putting it all on the line and winning big. But here you are, standing outside with the suckers, trying to pay off that cab, sweating the bills, you're getting older. It's so close, but damn it, you just can't get in until now. I can make it happen. You? Suck up. So here's the deal. I will show you the game, and then we're done. <laughs> okay. I think it's interesting that Saul or Gene went and sought out the dude who recognized him. Yeah. But he's doing it to cover tracks. Like he has like can't wait to see what this little plan is that he has. Ah, he still got the ring. Oh, Cinnabon. Yeah, buddy. <laughs> I'll take one of those. Good night, ladies. See you, Jane. Got one of those slipping Jimmy plans up his sleeve. Right? He adjusting the ring? Adjusted the ring. No problem? No, I, I just came to say thanks. You called the EMTs for me when I fainted. Yeah, I remember you. Get a lawyer! <laughs> Why detect Cinnabons? Yeah. Christ almighty, get him in here. <laughs> exactly. Gene Takovic. <laughs> hey, Gene. I'm Frank, this is Nick. Nick here um, did me a solid, so... Enjoy yourselves. Well, 9.45. Nick, you want to grab yours to go? Sure. Yeah, he's got to check the lot. Want to take a load off? Grab yourself a cup of coffee if you'd like. Yeah. He's a really nice guy. Please don't do anything to him. I haven't had one of these in forever. Watch in the waistline. Yeah, but every now and then. Well, no harm, right? I don't think there's a lot of foods that black and white coloring would do justice, but I think Cinnabon looks just as delicious in black and white as it would in color. Absolutely agreed. Did he put something in it? Right? Mm. Mm -mm -mm. Did you catch a game last night? The game. What the hell is wrong with those guys? I, mean, I can't even talk about it. Really thought this was the year. Yeah, me too. Oh, somebody's doing something while he's got him distracted. Oh, is he timing him? So he hasn't distracted him yet then. This is, how long does it take? Next week, Oklahoma State. The Yokies. Huh? Uh, it's, it's what we call them. You ever uh, done that to right? right? Topeka, Wichita, Camp <laughs> Beat Memorial. Damn straight. What do you love most? Well, that's a tough one. He's not actually answering questions, but answering them. No, he has no at idea what time. he's talking no. about. Yeah. The cougar helmet was the thumb breaker. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, he's the best when it comes to playing things off. Uh, I should probably be heading back. Well, thanks again. Oh, it's the least I could do. Come back anytime. All right, so now he knows exactly how long he, it takes him to eat a Cinnabon. Right. 
it's got to be what it is. I've never been great at predicting any of his plans. <laughs> and he's definitely going back. Yeah. Frank. Gene, Gene, the Cinnabon machine. Here you go, guys. <laughs> hey, can I? Thanks, Gene. Don't even ask. Grab a coffee. That was one hell of a game, huh? What were you thinking of halftime? And I'll tell you, you know who I'm not bitching about today? Bellini. Bellini? That's, nah. yeah, the coach. You know me, I go at him when things are bad. But when he does something good, I'm all about it. He's got to start doing his homework. It's college football. Because he lives in college football country. Well, this dude's going to have a freaking heart attack. Honestly, you're going to give like, diabetes. <laughs> giving him like the worst thing possible to eat. So you have roughly three minutes, ten seconds to give, you know, yourself an eight second leeway then. It was 312 the first day. Dude, how many times is he doing this? I don't know. But <laughs> they just buzz him in now. They're football buddies now. Oh. I mean, now I feel really bad for the security guard. You're doing horrible things to him on purpose. Like he thinks he has a new friend. Yeah. I mean, I wouldn't, you know. Oh, 316. I wouldn't hate you if you also worked at Cinnabon and you wanted to be friends. What are you doing? He's charting some shit out. You would thought maybe after everything that this dude's been through, he wouldn't. Yeah, he would just chill out. Be up to any kind of shenanigans, right? Mm-hmm. It's just not who he is. 11, 12, 17 feet, right here. They're even charting it out. <laughs> What is this, like the Italian job? Right. <laughs> Gotta create your model. All the way, guys. Okay. One, two, check. One, two. One, two. Starting position. Grab your bag. Go. That's it. Move. Move. Go, 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 go. One, Armani suits and run. Two, Air Jordan shoes for you. Yo. Three linen shirts for free. I like how everything rhymes. Four cashmere sweaters out the door. Five Patagonias to survive. <laughs> what the hell? Six crazy in the neck. Halt! Oh, what? You gotta be precise. Just three of each. And why do I gotta run around like an asshole? I already told you. Three minutes. Got it? That's our window. Yeah, but why three minutes? Because at three minutes, that's when security sees you on the cameras and the cops haul your ass to jail. They erase the tapes every 72 hours. That's why you only take three of each and only the pricey stuff. Three items, three minutes, it's easy. Let's go. Pigs get fat, hogs get slaughtered. I don't know. What don't you know? It's just this whole thing, it seems crazy. I'll tell you what's crazy. 50-year-old high school chemistry teacher comes into my office. The guy is so broke, he can't pay his own mortgage. One year later, he's got a pile of cash as big as a Volkswagen. That's crazy. I'll do it. I love how he used Walt as, like, the success story. <laughs> God. I mean, isn't it dangerous potentially getting this dude arrested? Wouldn't he, like, if he fucks up, wouldn't he immediately throw him under the bus? Be like, that's Saul Goodman. Yeah. Like, I'm I'm wondering what the hell his big plan is all about. Uh oh. Let's ask maintenance to give this area a polish. I'll call now. That's gonna fuck us from okay. shit. Have a good night. You too. Excuse me, man. There's a delivery. A delivery. No, no. Stop. Fourteen, twelve. 
Cottonwood Drive. Two-stroke engine sprayer pumps. This is a department store. Does it look like we use sprayer pumps here? I was giving this address, ma'am. I need to talk to your supervisor. You stay right here. All part of the plan. <laughs> of course it goes there, yeah. Dispatch, Steve. You guys just delivered something that we did not order. Your guy brought a giant wooden crate onto my loading dock. Some kind of spraying system. But I run a department store. We don't sell anything like that. Ricky's just going to have to put the box back on the truck. A little problem with that. He's got a pickup at the airport in an hour. It's a messy one, too. It's uh, <clears throat> 900 pounds of Spanish mackerel. Okay. I'm sorry, but that's not my problem. <laughs> Is dude in the box? Uh, Is that how they get him into the store? We're closing for the night here. <sighs> How's this? If you promise me that Ricky will get back here by 10 a.m. tomorrow, I'll hold the box overnight. Oh my god, you're a lifesaver. What's your name again? Everything always just lands right into place. <laughs> like, what the hell? Oh, showtime! <laughs> uh, he's just like, no rust at all. Just right back in the game. I feel like dude's definitely in the box. How can you breathe? Hopefully they figured that part out. How else were they going to get him into the building after closing? That's true. It was like Ocean's Eleven. Just enough breathing to get into the vault. Oh my God. Just enough air. Gentlemen. Hey, Gene. Hey, Gene. Hey, Huskers are back. Oh, probably heard me screaming all the way in Lincoln. And Martinez. Oh. 484 yards. That's a freshman record. I remember Martinez. I think they still got a shot. If they're talking about the actual Nebraska quarterback from, I don't remember what year. Hello, gorgeous. <laughs> Something different's gonna happen. Like I feel like. <laughs> yup. Move your ass. I, I'm horrified. Air Jordan shoes for you. Nice. Oh, he's even got the sensor clicker. Three. Linen shirts for free. Four. Cashmere sweaters out the door. Patagonia's to survive. 6,000 more seats. 6,000 more fans. I don't know. All oh, those luxury suites. Start saving now. Mm. You see that interview with Bellini? <laughs> <laughs> you can taste it now. Seven. Spendy dresses sent from heaven. Nine. Crazy lingerie is mine. Ten. Casket briefcases for men. Apples and oranges, my friend. Mm. Oh. Oh, come on, Osborne had the great Tommy Frazier. Frazier, Frazier, yes, yes, yes. Say it with sure. me. <laughs> How about that 44 to 21 win against the Buffs? <sighs> Damn, Gene's done his homework. 76 yard pass. Halfway there? Holy shit, dude. Wow. Mm. I'm so... This gives me so much anxiety. Well, this is a situation where we don't know what happens to this dude. Teen, Kate Spade's queen. My teen, Calvin Leathers on the scene. Oh my god. I don't want him to get away with it, but then I also do want him to get away with it so that I see. Oh! <coughs> you okay? They waxed the floor. Oh shit, that wasn't like a mark. That was. Oh shit. Oh, I mean, both shit, powerhouses, dude. of course. <laughs> oh my god! 
can't watch this. Michigan, Ohio State. That dude straight knocked there. himself out yeah. to... <laughs> what am I doing? What? <laughs> Look at me. I don't know. I, I don't know. <laughs> I have a wife, right, Frank? Oh, yeah. 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 And she's waiting for you. Look at me. I got... I got no one. My parents are dead. My brother... My brother is dead. I, uh... I got no wife. No kids. No friends. If I die tonight, no one would care. What difference would it make? Hey, buddy, I'm sure that you mean a lot to, to a lot of, lots of people. If I died tonight, my landlord would pack up my stuff. It'd take him three hours. Cinnabon would just hire a new manager. Gene who? Poof! I'd be gone, I'd be... A ghost. A sh shadow. It just be... Oh. Shit. I mean, Frank, what's the point, Frank? <laughs> oh my God. <laughs> I'm so sorry, you didn't need to hear any of that. No, 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 that's, that's okay. No, that, that is okay. Everybody has bad days. It, it's just like life's ups and life's downs. Hey, you're not gonna tell Nick, are you? Oh, <laughs> no. Thanks so much for listening. Yeah, no, 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 no problem. That fucking worked. Dude had his back turned to the cameras for like five minutes. <laughs> he knocked himself the fuck out. All because of the scuff mark on the... <laughs> Can't say it was him because he was in with them all night. <laughs> Honestly, I thought he was gonna get in the box and wait there until that shit work. How much do we get for him? I don't know, maybe 500 each. You guys enjoying yourselves? We'll hold on to that feeling, because this is it. Yeah, we know. Uh, well, in case you forget, you transported stolen goods with a value exceeding $5,000, and the truck you used to do it was rented in Council Bluffs across state lines. You told us to rent the truck over there. Theft from an interstate shipment, up to 10 years. Sale of stolen goods, 10 years. Conspiracy to commit a federal crime. Oh, conspiracy? It was your idea. It's called mutually assured destruction. If I go down, you go down. And you don't have to threaten us. We're all friends here. I am not your friend. And if you get greedy and you decide to come back for more, don't. Gene Takovic, you never heard of him. The Cottonwood Mall, you don't go there. You see me coming, you cross to the other side of the street. I need you to say it. We're done. He needed oh to do God. all that to protect his identity. Done. Say it. We're done. We're, we're done. It's like, I got you a massive score. You can make a shit ton of money, but you go to jail a long time if you try to fuck with me. <laughs> I keep forgetting to ask you about Nippy. You're not gonna believe this, but uh, he was with a family the whole time, just, just a few blocks away. Oh. Yeah, after all that, a happy ending. See, happy ending. Happy ending? Yeah. A happy ending's coming. What if you see, like, Kim you walking the mall or something? <laughs> Just, like, out of nowhere. Oh, my God. <laughs> Eugene, aren't you taking them? I mean, he should probably go visit the security guards still, right? Just to make it not seem like... That was Anything it. weird was going on? Right. <laughs> 
<laughs> what an episode. What an episode. Agreed. I... Just... Getting something fresh where we don't know what happens to him and he's doing one of his schemes and it doesn't go according to plan. Oh my god. So nerve wracking. That was so nerve wracking. Yeah. And it's just the plan was brilliant. Yep. I I have no other words, honestly. That was nuts. It picked right up with the last time that we saw Gene and the dude recognized him and was like, "Dude, the thing. Better call Saul." So he had to do his best to make sure that that dude would never see him again, look at him again, call him Saul Goodman again. He had to do something absolutely insane to make sure that this dude would never do anything to blow his cover. Mm -hmm. And he took it to such an extreme that dude robbed how many thousands of dollars worth of stuff from the store? Word. Purses, <laughs> clothes, shoes, everything. And rented the truck and like across state, like, like the amount of stuff that he was going through, like listing all the charges, like this, they'd be fucked for a long time. And he's just like, look, I go down, you go down. We all go down. So leave me the fuck alone. Don't ever come back to my mall. Don't do anything ever again. You've never heard my name before. Unbelievable. I love it, though. I Unbelievable. Mean, it was kind of genius. I mean, what else could he... Like, I'm trying to think Like, what else he could have done <clears throat> besides like killing the guy to protect his identity. Slow down. But just... Yeah, because he wouldn't possibly do such a thing. <laughs> <laughs> Not again. It's just, it was just so crazy. Because I would have to imagine he's done nothing like that for a while. Right. That's and why he had to bring out the pinky ring. Yeah, he, he brought out the ring. He's toying with it. I feel bad for the one security guard because it feels like they really bonded. Well, they had that, a really good and friendship. Also, dude, that's a lot of sin. It probably like, it felt like that was weeks of planning. I'm not body shaming, food shaming, nothing. That's not good for Nobody you. Nobody should eat a Cinnabon a day. No. <laughs> Nobody. I don't care how much you work out. That's bad for you. You want a Cinnabon? Go have a fucking Cinnabon. Yes, bitch. Not for 30 days straight. Maybe not every day. <laughs> I mean, I could totally do it because they're Oh amazing. my God. Delicious. So good. So good. But it was like. I know what I'm doing tomorrow. He, he like fell right back into it. It was easy for him. Mm -hmm. The conversation that he had, having to like get the the sales manager, the store manager, to keep that giant box on her loading dock for overnight. Like, what are the chances of that actually even happening? Like, had it dropped off at the perfect time, she really probably didn't have any other choice. Because it's like she didn't. She you're she closing to down. Go. Yeah, yeah. And I mean, just. How smooth he is with his comment. Like, he, he, like, it was just, it's like riding a bike for him. Literally. He didn't skip a beat. There was a moment when it was all over, and you saw that, like, I was kind of trying to, like, analyze what he could possibly be feeling in that moment. Right. Was it, like, the adrenaline rush? Was yeah. it, like, him being upset? Was it him being, like, sad that the last time he did such a thing, it was with Kim? He mentioned his wife. He mentioned his brother. He mentioned his parents in this episode. He we mentioned said he Walt. Have a wife, he right? But he mentioned a... wife. Yeah. Like obviously, he's thinking about Kim in that moment. I would have to imagine. But it's. I mean, we don't know and what his brother. her. I was waiting for him to be like, my wife's dead too. <laughs> like, could you imagine? <laughs> but just like there was so much in that episode, and it's like the first time. In a long time, we didn't know what was going to happen to him. Yeah. I mean, I, that's why I, I, that like was when it comes so to that well kind done. of stuff, like, I almost like can't watch it. Like, it's so anxiety ridden yeah. that I have to like, okay, well, yeah. I'll turn it off. <laughs> <laughs> like it was, it was so, when the dude slipped and fell down, it was like, oh, 
fuck. You're an idiot. Well, I mean, it wasn't his fault that the floor got waxed. Like, you shouldn't have been in there stealing shit. I mean, yes, true. But God. it's just such a well-done episode. There was so much in there. And it, it kind of brings up something. It reminds me of a conversation we had during one of our live streams where someone jumped into the chat and they'd never seen Breaking Bad or Better Call Saul. And they were asking what they should start with. And, I mean, I think we all came to the agreement that you just start with Breaking Bad and then watch Better Call Saul. But could you imagine starting with Better Call Saul and not knowing what happens to Mike or Saul or Kim or well, Jimmy or, like, any of the characters? Like, not knowing that Kim's not in Breaking Bad and, like, having things play out the way that they did in that show. Like, things were still so nerve-wracking. Even, with like, moments with Nacho. Remember, he was in the restaurant. He had to, like, steal, like, something out of the a pot. Like, the pills. The pills out of the pocket. Like, that was such an intense scene. And it was just one of those things where, like, what if you do start, like, have the discussion. I, I would love to hear what you guys think. But, like, having that moment that we haven't had in a while, not knowing what happens to Gene. He could have gotten caught. He could have gotten arrested. He could still get caught, could still get arrested. If he doesn't keep going back to see the security guards and they realize a bunch of shit's missing, you don't think that dude might be like, wait... Like, I was distracted that night. Dude never came back after that. Like, maybe? I don't know. I don't, but, but can't, I don't know, because he's there. He was there with the security Right, doesn't mean what? you couldn't have been, like, coordinating it and, like... But I'm just saying, like, I would probably go by and visit a couple times. Maybe not bring a Cinnabon and be like, oh, I got yelled at for bringing too many out of the office or out of the store or whatever. But... I don't know. Like it, it just felt refreshing to be a little bit more on edge than normal because we don't know what the outcome is. Correct. Even well, I mean, I'm still on edge sometimes, even though you do know. Oh, hundred percent. Survive. I think that's what makes the writing and the storytelling in this show so brilliant. Because there are moments with Saul and Mike and Gus, and it's like, dude, we fucking know they live. Why are we freaking out right now? It's like, oh, because the music's amazing. The way the dialogue plays out, the way things are filmed, everything about it is so perfect that you kind of, I don't know if you forget that like their characters end up being okay in the next show, right. but it's just such a well done show that it still freaks you out even in moments where you know the characters are gonna walk away from whatever moment is freaking us out in the moment. Yes. Like, it's so good and Getting a full Gene episode, so cool. I just, I, I, I wonder how much more of that we have. Because I think three episodes left. Shit. I want to say three. Do we get all Gene? Do we go back to, like, the Saul Goodman timeline? Because now we're playing with, like, we've seen him play three characters now. Yes. Gene, Saul, and Jimmy. Like, we've now seen all three within episodes, like, two episodes, we've seen him play all three roles. So, I'm really curious to see just how this is going to play out, what are the episodes going to look like, how are they going to wrap up this amazing show. That, I mean, that was such a simple premise of an episode. Yeah. But it was so good. Agreed. <laughs> so well done. And who doesn't want a Cinnabon now? Oh, I mean... How much, how much of that episode was watching somebody eat one? <laughs> like, right. most of it. Whatever that, like, co <sighs> that was, like, probably a coffee drink at the end. Yeah. Oh, that looks delicious. I mean, I said it during the episode, but, like, the black and white, it still does the Cinnabon justice. Because the white of the frosting just pops even more, and it's like... That's really the best part of it. Like, obviously, like, the whole Cinnabon is delicious. Uh -huh. The middle of the Cinnabon. But Anybody else? The middle the or the outside? The frosting is what do you amazing. Like? Yeah. I like all of it, but it's still the whiteness just pops even more of the Cinnabon. It's like... You like the white sauce? I mean, I like the whole Cinnabon. Like, I like the whole thing, but it, 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 I feel like a lot of food would just not play as well in black and white. A Cinnabon, I think, plays great in black and white. It still looked absolutely delicious. And I think the greatest cinnamon thing, Cinnabon, that I've ever had was in Albuquerque. The yeah. thing was, like, this big. 
There's like a famous place in, in Albuquerque that has gigantic Cinnabons. Let us know down below. <laughs> yeah, I forget. I forget the name of the place, but it was probably the... It was like on Man vs. Food or something yeah, once. Yeah, yeah. So good. But yeah, I mean, that was a spectacular episode. I, I love the fact that we got a full Gene episode. I can't wait to see what's next. And then kind of what comes next after that. Because the storytelling is kind of like all over the timeline now. We've got so many things to play with and just the anticipation of where we're going and, and potentially what we find out and what we learn. And I'm still super interested to find out about Kim. Yeah. Where she is, what she's doing. Did she go home to Nebraska? Is she wandering around there? Again, I, I said it in the intro. If it's not meant to be in this story, that's fine. Because, again, they're flawless storytellers. And it'll probably be amazing regardless of how they play it out. But true. I'm just super intrigued. I just can't wait to see how it goes. So, yeah. any other thoughts? Oh. Do you have emojis? I do. So, we're going to go with, for our episode, a white heart, okay. a black heart, oh. and a necktie. Oh, at the next high at the end okay, yeah. there his life so white heart black heart necktie all right y'all there are the emojis for this episode leave them down in the comments below and share your thoughts on that episode and where do you think we're going for the last handful of episodes leave all your predictions we love reading them so yeah leave them all down below and we'll catch you guys later have a good one bye